And so welcome everyone. Thanks so much for coming to this webinar about unmasking the cybersecurity threat and barcodes. We have none other but Jean Anderson with us today to walk us through this experience. And uh, we have a small group, as I was mentioning, so we're hopeful for lots of questions. So feel free to unmic yourself and ask questions, or if you'd rather put it in the chat, we can also do it from that. For many of you, you've you're familiar with this, so it's not that it's not that new of a topic, but I did want to kind of go through maybe some small differences between the legacy hardware from code and the more recent hardware from code, the small differences there. But the topic is about what we've coined as rogue barcodes. And if you find that I misspelled it and they're rouge barcodes, well, they're still red barcodes. But uh, the idea here is we want to make sure that people understand what you can actually do with barcodes to hide system level commands that you would otherwise never do to yourself simple thing would be typing delete star dot star. No one's going to wipe their own computer, yet you can throw commands like that into a barcode and in a production environment or any place that might be using a barcode scanner, you can introduce that kind of command into a PC or a network environment and cause all kinds of heartache for folks. So I thought we'd start with just a real quick background on the more recent high profile cyber threats or about ransomware, but it's really the part of the same category of people who are hacking in and either stealing information or planting viruses within a corporate network. And there's some good links here I saw on related to different types of ransomware attacks, exploit kits, where you get somebody to click on something that's actually a, um, a bad website, a malicious website, but there's lots of good filters for stuff like that. Email attachments, most of us know not to use the reader pane set to automatic, but it still happens. And you can have folks that can uh, embed seemingly harmless uh, attachments like a Word doc, even an image file, and you can embed malicious viruses in those as well. And then, of course, with email, we all get spam every single day, and there's a lot of things that just they look like they're coming from Microsoft or from a major customer like Boeing or something. But if you mouse over the link, you'll see in the status bar that it's going somewhere else. Those are real common attacks and people don't really think about another one, which is 2D barcodes. And this is a especially interesting attack because it doesn't require an internet connection. It doesn't require a web server. It's just something that you can sneak in through some other means. It might be a bus stop that has a QR code advertising a product or a movie. You could have a sticker go over the top of it. It looks totally normal, but it could actually impact somebody's phone. If you're inside an environment that's scanning tags and labels all the time, you could somehow sneak in a barcode on top of something that looks like an asset ID or a shipping link. And when people scan that label, it can initiate a series of system level commands that are happening so fast, you can't see what's happening. And before you know it, bad things have happened. So we want to kind of go through what are these bad things. And just as a barcode background, again, I think probably most people are familiar with this, but we're not really talking about linear barcodes. We're not talking about UPCs or code 39s. Those things are so inefficient in carrying data that there's not much you can do with that. It's possible. I could probably do something nefarious with that, but it's somewhat limited in terms of what kind of sophistication you could throw into something like that. So we're really talking about 2D symbols, PDF 417s, data matrix, QR codes, Aztec, these kinds of things. You can embed thousands of characters and you can have something that looks like a, a tiny UID asset tracking barcode for the US government, or it could be a PDF 417 that's more sizable, that looks like a shipping lady. And inside that you can capture or include a lot of system level commands that get enacted on your PC because when you plug in these barcode scanners, they are most of the time now acting like keyboard number two. That's the beauty of barcode scanners these days is they don't need drivers typically, there's still some that do, but most of the time they're just able to operate in an out-of-the-box fashion using Windows or Mac or Linux keyboard drivers. So 
you plug it in and it becomes keyboard number two. And so wherever the cursor is, that's where the data is going to flow. So typically, that still seems pretty safe, right? But unfortunately, you can pretty much bypass any program that might be active on a screen by simply hitting the Windows Start key and the letter R. So if you do this within this presentation, you can see that I'm popping up a run command. And in that run command, I can do all kinds of things. I could initiate a command prompt and I could then submit commands like delete star dot star. I could a Chinese web server, letting them know what my IP address is. I could put in a web address to a terrorist organization, right? Some crime syndicate. Now you've got an employee within Acme Corporation that's actively going out to sites for Al Qaeda or ISIS. Obviously, they aren't intending to do that, but they are. And now you need to investigate that. So getting access to this run command is the key to the threat of barcodes. So we're really talking about two different types of threats. The big ones are the ones that are typically limited to people who have administrator accounts. People who are allowed to go out and make changes to a corporate network. People who are allowed to shut off the firewall for a corporation. And so there's been a lot of argument in the past few years of us having this capability in our scanners and say, oh, we don't have to worry about that. We have group policies that negate the ability for people to enact these commands, even if they did scan a code. That might be true for a fair number of them, but there's still, even for a normal user that is locked down from administrative commands, there's still a lot of things that I call mayhem attacks. Things like, again, scanning a barcode that takes somebody automatically out to a criminal website or that automates an email that threatens the president of the United States. All of these things can be done and they're completely valid options within a normal user's group policy. So I call them mayhem attacks. They're not going to be attacking the corporation, but they cause loss of productivity because now the company needs to investigate what the heck is going on in our network. Do we have somebody who's threatening actual employees? Or is this something else? And in this case, it's it's just a bogus threat, but it still has to be investigated. All right. So Mac and Linux, I've been talking about you can get to the run key by hitting Windows and R. So is this a threat only for Windows? No, not really. Uh, you know, Linux and Mac, they do have a little bit more of a two-tiered structure. If you're going to be doing certain system commands, you have to actually have root access in Linux, super user accounts. So there might be some protection on certain things there, but certainly not from mayhem. Those things can happen regardless of what the operating system is. And hopefully you can see that this isn't just limited to desktop PCs. This actually has the same potential uh, for impacting Android and iOS phones. Since we're using phones now with the built-in camera to scan a barcode and uh, the apps will sense, oh, do you want to go out to this website? That's the initial use of that app, but now you can see how we can actually take control of things too. So what we have is something we call Barcode OS, which has been around for more than a decade now. And inside Barcode OS is what we call a firewall. We actually have a patent on this. What this firewall does is it blocks the ability to access the run command, not just the Windows start key, but the run commands. There's more than one way to getting to that command. And in doing so, there's no way for the command itself to get to the PC. So we completely block the transmission of that code. And we can send then an audible feedback to the user saying, this is a bad code. Don't let anybody scan it. And that's, as far as we know, this is the only solution out there within barcode scanners to provide this kind of character firewall that's active all the time. So it doesn't matter what module, what mode you're in, it's not a configurable feature. It's always on if you have barcode OS enabled barcode scanners. And again, currently this is only on the code core hardware line. We do have it in the older generation, the CR 1000s, 1400s, 2600s and so forth. But we also have it in the current generation of the CR 1100s, 1500s, 2700s, 
It operates the same in all of those different models. It is embedded from day one. There's nothing to install. There's nothing to configure, and you cannot disable it. So how do you know when you've hit code? Well, if it's the older model, it beeps five times. And now in the newer Gen 2 models, we just have one big, long, two-second long beep. We feel that that'll get somebody's attention. Now, if you do have an application mode that you're running, we have several. We have one for the medical industry for UDI barcode validation. We have one for the DOD that does UID validation. But even in the basic mode, there's a mode where you can get a report output. And if it's configured for that, it will block the barcode from transmitting to the PC, but it will also output to the PC a string that says malicious barcode blocked. Now, all of these things I'm gonna now transfer into here are on our support websites. This is the main one here. And I'm gonna back out of this, I think, and go back now into, right? so if you go out to ide-integration.net, now .com, .com will take you to our corporate site. This is a, an application or project support site. If you click on the Gen 2 button, it'll bring you out to this page where you can configure our scanners, you can uh, select different application modes. Uh, currently we have Again, a basic module, a DOD module, and a healthcare module. We also have a little interactive demo section here where you can play with those different modes and see how easy it is to configure them to output different things for different purposes. But I have a rogue barcode threat link here, and I'm gonna start with, I have two scanners. I have a CR1100 from code, and I have a CR1500 from code. One of them does not have barcode OS. I have completely stripped it of anything related to barcode OS at all. And the other one is got our embedded barcode OS firewall. And so I do wanna make it clear that this is not a vulnerability with code hardware only. Every single barcode scanner can have the same vulnerability because all of them are keyboard number two and all of them can transmit function keys like Windows Start and Run. So this is, I'm only showing it on the CodeCorp one because that's what I have today, and it's the easiest thing for me to demonstrate. But the same concept, the same threat, affects every barcode scanner on the planet. Again, to our knowledge, there's nobody else who's providing a firewall. So if I were to take my firewall scanner, and I look here at this, fairly common barcode. I'll just scan it and it'll be two seconds in an extremely annoying way saying, oh man, that's there's something wrong there, right? But if I take the other scanner and I scan the same barcode, it opens up the run command, right? So I, there's all kinds of things you can throw into this. It's like 200 different system level commands, shutting off the firewall, pinging foreign servers, deleting your entire desktop or your My Documents folder. You can delete everything on your PC. You can send a threatening email. So let's explore some of the fun things you can do with these barcode scanners if they don't have a firewall. So that's the first introduction to that. And this particular uh, website is not a terrorist website, but it is a site that's dedicated to hacking via USB and network devices. Uh, it's a fun site to go to. They actually have some great videos as well, hack5.org. But you can see that I didn't have the browser up. In fact, I'll close the whole thing down, except for, well, I guess I have to run it here because I've got this on, but you don't need to have the browser even active for this to work. It's happening so fast, you can't see exactly what's going on, but it's an equivalent to going back to here show you what's happening. It opens this up and then you can type in any web address you want. I'll put in yahoo.com just to prove it. Hit that and up comes yahoo.com, right? So you can embed whatever you want as a website in this command and it'll go there. Even if it's isis.org, alqaeda.org, whatever. Here's another fun one, emails. Now, if I look at my status bar here. I'm going to actually shut down my email. So again, doing the Rocky and Bullwinkle thing here, there's nothing up my sleeve. I don't have Outlook even open. 
Okay, I come back to this and I'm going to just scan this and it'll open up Outlook, even though it's closed, provide a two, a subject and a body. And it happens before you even get a chance to think about it. Now I do it this way for the demo because I want you to see what it's filling out. But in reality, you see that? It's another hotkey for doing send. And if I just include the send with that rogue barcode, it automatically would send that out. So imagine what you can do with this, right? You can automate threatening letters to the CEO of a corporation or political figure or whoever you want. Obviously, those things are going to create mayhem within a corporate environment. They have to be investigated. Productivity stops. Employees have to be investigated, maybe taken off the job for a while before you figure out why did you send a threatening letter to the president? I didn't. I didn't. All I did was scan this barcode. You can see easily how much mayhem you can actually uh, generate with these barcode attacks, and they're not that hard to create. They're just simple barcodes. There's lots of programs out there to create them. You can open up the registry. You can open up a documents folder. You can open up a desktop and delete everything that's there. Whenever you are opening up any of these regions of your desktop, you realize that you can do control A to select everything and control D to delete. So again, I can include those hotkeys in the barcode and their information is gone before you even have a chance to figure out what's going on. You'll see a lot of hotkeys in um, browser programs where everybody's got hotkeys in there. And you can do the same thing there. And I'm just gonna see if I can, uh, what would be a safe one that's not gonna kill my my presentation if I shut down windows with by scanning it's this presentation by right I have to be a little bit careful of what I'm doing desktop so now if I switch to the 1500 each and every single one of these barcodes gets blocked it doesn't matter what it is and I don't have to actually block all 200 and some system level codes that are available from windows all I need to do is block access to the run command, and that's what our firewall does. There's more than one way to get to the run command. I'm not going to go down into those details. I'm also not going to show you how to create rogue barcodes, but the fact is if I can do it in seconds, then other people can too. So this, in a nutshell, is really the threat. You can do whatever you want in a 2D barcode that is allowed by Windows itself. If I just Google Win 10 system, man, you get lots of different options. Complete list of all Windows 10 commands. There's all kinds of things. Um, shutting off the firewall is a fun one. Yeah. But anytime you can get into a contacts folder or potentially just delete something that is of value to somebody, it's a threat. So, the fact that Windows provides you all of these system level commands that you can put in on the run command line, that's not their fault. They're trying to actually product. The fault here is in allowing it to happen in an automated, unmanaged way by a fast barcode scan. And fortunately for us with our barcode OS filter, our firewall, it doesn't matter what mode we're operating the scanner in. It's always there. It's always protecting. If you don't have a reference to the, the run command, the data will just flow to the computer like normal. But we've at least nullified the threat that can reduce productivity or cause damage to a company entity. So coming back to the last line here, I found this on the net and I thought, yeah, it's pretty, pretty much true. You don't really know your true vulnerabilities most of the time, but a bigger sin is to know that you have weaknesses and not do anything about it. And so I think since you know that you actually have options with at least the code corp line to put in this kind of character syntax firewall, again, to our knowledge, it's the only thing available on the planet to nullify this potential threat.
And with that, I think I will probably go back and see if anybody has any questions about it or because usually somebody has a great idea for how to do a joke on their colleague at work. So I'll come back here. And you can certainly unmute yourself. I don't think, Emily, I didn't put any controls on mute, did you? I did not. Okay. So by all means, um, unmute yourself if you have any questions or type them in the chat window. Uh, don't forget to also kind of just go out to id-integration.net slash barcode OS. If you get lost with that part of it, just go to id-integration.net and hit the Gen 2 button to get you to barcode OS. And this way you can actually play with some of this. We also have a link to uh, our YouTube video library. I think we're going to maybe set up some PCs that we can sabotage without causing great heartburn here at IDI and videotape that process so that uh, we can mount that on our YouTube channel truly show you the damage that can be done without blowing up a presentation in the middle of it. 